Hello, I am Majid2006 welcome to the channel what we are why. How to know when a relationship is over, and how to move forwards once it ends. I understand that it is a very painful issue, but we must know about it and do the best appropriate treatment. A common trajectory for the end of a relationship is the slow tapering off, a protracted period of telltale signs and willful denial, as motivation to patch things up dwindles in one or both partners. One of the most common refrains after a breakup is shock on the part of one member of the dissected duo, which often belies the presence of multiple clues that might have pointed to what was to come. A sudden, sharp break can feel more shocking, but it's also clearer. A long disintegration period can leave a person reeling, unsure at exactly what point they stopped being an us and became a me. So, what are the signs? And how can you end a relationship and process its ending in a healthy, constructive way? Be careful not to make an emotional decision, stay with me until the end to add to your knowledge. 9 Signs It May Be Time To End Your Relationship 1. You agree with one another to keep the peace. While being agreeable and non-confrontational can be an asset to a relationship, constantly agreeing with or conceding to your partner to keep the peace can be a sign of a relationship that has tipped over the edge and toppled down the other side. Allowing your partner to walk all over you, or your partner allowing you to do the same, is a sign that the balance of power is off. 2. Communication Breakdown You may notice that you and your partner rarely discuss things anymore, either positive or negative. When issues arise, rather than work to solve them you may both sweep them under the rug, but hold on to the frustration you feel under the surface. It may feel at this stage like there's no point trying to work things out, and you'd rather opt for a peaceful life. Similarly, when positive things arise in your life you may not feel an urge to let them know. 3. Aggressive or confrontational communication style. Conversely to a total communication breakdown, you and your partner may be arguing like there's no tomorrow, constantly at each other's throats and unreceptive to any attempts to patch things over. When people are feeling relationship frustrations, it can be extremely tempting to release energy through aggressive or confrontational behavior. Like a pressure valve, the rush of anger can provide a temporary feeling of satisfaction but in the long term this type of behavior erodes trust and respect and kills communication between partners. Just as damaging as overt aggression, passive-aggressive communication is in itself steeped in anger. Passive-aggressive behaviors include stonewalling, mockery, and refusing to respond to communication. Though this kind of behavior can feel like an outlet for frustration you can't express via overt aggression, it can be just as damaging and abusive. 4. Fantasizing about others. This can be a bit of a false sign, in fact, most experts will tell you that fantasizing about others is part of a normal, healthy sexuality, and that almost everyone does it. The clincher is how much you find that your fantasy disturbs your peace. Does it feel natural and like a positive expression of your sexuality, or does it feel guilt-laden and like it's distracting you from your partner? Do you fantasize purely about sex or about a whole other relationship? Is that fantasy fixated on one person who is known to you? These are questions you should ask yourself to help you ascertain whether your fantasy is healthy or overtaking, and degrading, your real relationship. 5. You or your partner are spending extended periods of time with other people, like family and friends, at the expense of time you might usually spend together. This doesn't mean that you or they are being unfaithful, you may simply be moving your social world away from theirs to build space for a newly single version of yourself. This shouldn't be confused with maintaining a healthy social life outside of the relationship. Remember that it's not your job to police who your partner spends their time with, that type of behavior is widely regarded as a signpost for an abusive or codependent relationship. 6. Lack of physical intimacy. Intimacy in your relationship may be rare or unheard of at this stage, both sexual and non-sexual. Physical intimacy of all kinds is critical sustenance for a relationship. Touching releases hormones that produce love and connection, namely oxytocin. Oxytocin is a neuropeptide released in your brain when you are physically intimate, sexually or non-sexually, with another person, it produces feelings of trust, bonding and devotion. In the absence of physical intimacy, those feelings can dwindle. 7. You want different things in life. While it's totally healthy for people in a relationship to have unique goals and visions of the future, being on completely different pages about what you want out of life can prove problematic. Being with someone whose values and lifestyle greatly differ from yours usually doesn't end well, dating psychologist and coach Madeline Mason Rontree tells The Independent. If you realize that you and your partner want very different things, you'll have to evaluate whether you're willing to make some sacrifices and whether they'd be willing to do the same for you in the future. 
Examples of big differences include having contrasting views on wanting children, living close to family versus living afar, and having a rootless lifestyle moving every four years versus having a predictable stable home environment, Mason Rountree explains. Not wanting the exact same thing as your partner isn't necessarily a deal-breaker, you're allowed to have different interests and hobbies, but if you disagree on fundamental things like having kids, it might be a sign that you're not meant to be. Furthermore, Roberta Shaler, PhD, tells Women's Health that it's easy to lose sight of the dreams you once had for your life when your partner doesn't share your ideals. She suggests you both make a list of five things you value most. If you don't share at least three of them, you're going to have a problem because you don't have the same approach to life, she warns. 8. You and your partner no longer trust each other. Healthy relationships are built on trust, and if you and your partner no longer have that, you're in trouble. Trust issues are often a result of infidelity or lying, and if your partner is guilty of one or both, it can be incredibly hard to rebuild the relationship, but it's not impossible, Babita Spinelli tells Mind Body Green. If you're both willing to put in the hard work to repair the relationship, you might be able to slowly rebuild the trust you once used to have. However, if you can't bring yourself to forgive your significant other for their indiscretion, whatever it may be, rebuilding trust will be nearly impossible, Spinelli says. If it is truly able to be built back up, both partners need to be committed not only to the repairing process but to fixing the root of the problems that led to the breakdown of trust in the first place, Andrea Bonier explains in an article for Psychology Today. If you find that you constantly need to reassure yourself of your partner's trustworthiness by checking their phone behind their back or find yourself constantly worrying about whether or not they are telling you the truth, the relationship is as good as over, according to Healthline. That constant, nagging feeling in the pit of your stomach can be emotionally draining, not to mention that worrying about your partner's faithfulness all the time can take its toll on your mental health. 9. You no longer feel like you're a priority to your partner. New relationships are often accompanied by excitement and the desire to be in each other's company as much as possible. It's normal for that initial passion to cool a little, but if you notice that you're no longer a priority to your partner and that they spend more time with their friends than with you, it's important to start asking questions, dating expert James Priest tells The Independent. If they give you lame excuses for why they can't spend time with you, the relationship probably isn't healthy anymore. Priest says that it's best to end things and find someone who makes you feel loved. After all, you deserve it. CEO and founder of Blush Online Life Coaching Callie Rogers agrees with Priest. In an article she wrote for HuffPost, Rogers urged readers not to stay in relationships where they no longer feel special or loved. It's hard convincing ourselves of our worth. We don't need the duty of convincing our partner, too, she wrote. Registered psychotherapist Parisa Gambari tells Cosmopolitan that there's a fine line between having a partner who is going through a busy season in life and a partner who doesn't want to make time for you. It's important to know the difference. If your partner is consistently inattentive and neglectful of your needs and wants, despite your best efforts in communicating your needs to them, then it's fair to say your partner is not valuing you and the relationship, she warns. How to accept the end of a relationship. Processing the end of a relationship and moving forward is a tricky business peppered with stops and starts and back steps. But the end of a relationship doesn't need to be a purely negative event. Losing someone can be a pretty profound way to reacquaint you with yourself. Cultivate new relationships, new habits, and new interests. It's common for people to become somewhat stagnant in a relationship, occupying their time and energy with their partner. Newly single, now is the time to be pursuing things you've allowed to fall by the wayside, new friendships, new habits, new interests. It may sound like nothing more than a distraction, but building new facets of your life can contribute to a sense of wholeness and identity beyond the relationship you have left behind. Take the time to get to know the complicated and often conflicting emotions you're feeling. There's no denying that you'll be in an emotional rut for a while. Attempting to subdue or control your emotions will most likely have the paradoxical effect of extending and enhancing them, so, like all losses, you need to take time to grieve. It's an irritating but true statement. These things take time, patience is required, and an understanding that suffering is temporary. Think about the positives, without denying the negatives. It can be annoying to hear, but there really are significant positives to the end of relationships, whether or not you choose to see them. The new relationships, habits, and interests mentioned above are one major bonus. More broadly, being alone represents an opportunity to get to know yourself as you are now. There's no hiding behind a partner so you can really interrogate who you are and what you want from life. In the long term, building a level of self-knowledge and self-esteem actually improves your chances of entering into a mutually fulfilling, 
healthy relationship in the future. Avoid cycles of negativity. It's important that you're honest with yourself about ways that you've suffered, but incessantly focusing on your partner's negative attributes and dwelling on anger serves nobody. In fact, that kind of anger is actively damaging to your mental health. It also often acts as a camouflage for remnant feelings of love, especially if you feel you've been hurt or betrayed in any way. How to tell your partner the relationship is over. The first step, telling your partner it's over, often seems like the hardest. There are ways to manage it positively and kindly, and ways not to do it. Do end the relationship as soon as you have figured out that it's nearing its sell-by date. Don't drag it out for fear of a, hurting your partner or b, losing a sense of security or comfort in your life. Dragging something out to save your partner's emotions can conversely cause them more harm, since they're likely to pick up on signs of discontent from you. Dragging something out because you're afraid of being alone is cruel to the person you're with, who deserves to be let go with dignity and start the process of moving on. Do end things in person. Don't shy away from the difficult conversation by conducting it remotely. You will both be able to move on quicker if you've hashed it out in person and said your physical goodbyes, rather than leaving things unsaid. Do be honest about the reasons. Do be clear that it's over and don't give false signals. It can be hard to say goodbye and mean it, but dragging out the inevitable by going back on your decision is painful for both partners and leads to confusion and miscommunication. It was hard for me to make this video. It was so hard to even say these words. I know how hard it is to follow these words, what to do when we have no choice, life is so hard. Now, if you want to be successful in romantic relationships and no more, subscribe to my channel I made many tutorials for you I will kiss you, my dear.